In this video, we're going to discuss the midpoint rule as well as the trapezoidal rule. So, the midpoint rule says that assume a function is continuous on an interval a to b, a closed interval, and n is a positive integer where delta x is b minus a over n. So what's going to happen is our interval is divided into n subintervals. Delta x is the length of each one of those. Okay, the uh, I think of it rectangles here. We're talking about the length here is delta x, and f of m i is going to be the height of that because m i is the center of this. So we're using that to gauge our height. And hence we get this definition. m sub n is the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of m i times delta x. And the limit of that sum, if we had an infinite number of rectangles, would be our, in, our definite integral from a to b. Now I know that's a lot to sink in, so if you need to listen to that again, please do. But I'm going to go and dive into example 1 and use the midpoint rule to estimate the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx using four subintervals. Okay, and then we're going to compare that to the actual value in a moment. Right, so to begin with, though, we need to find delta x. Delta x is b minus a over n, which would be 1 minus 0 over 4, because that is the number of subintervals we have. Here's our b, here's our a, as is in definite integrals. So delta x is 1 fourth. Now a, a is equal to our first point, and that is equal to 0. x1, x2, we're going to end up with x3 actually. And delta x tells us how much to increase, so this will be 1 fourth, this will be 1 half or two-fourths, and three-fourths, well, we do need an x4, that will be our b, which is 1. Now, what the midpoint rule says, this is where it differs from things like the left and right endpoint rules, okay? What it says is that we are going to find the midpoint of these intervals. So we have 0 to 1 fourth, 1 fourth to 1 half, 1 half to 3 fourths, 3 fourths to 1, those are our intervals. Well, the midpoint of each of these we average those two, m1 here is 1 eighth, that is 1 half, halfway between 0 and 1 fourth. Similarly, we do the same thing with each of these. Right, so halfway between 1 fourth and 1 half should be 3 eighths. If you notice, that's actually 2 eighths or 1 fourth added, so our delta x is actually how we traverse between those m3 will be 5 eighths, and m4 will be 7 eighths. Now, we have exactly as many midpoints as we did intervals because each interval has one. Now, we want to use those to find f of mi. We're going to evaluate our function, our original function, f of x, equal to x squared at 1 eighth. Actually, I'm going to write it like this. f of m1 f of m2, which again we're, means we're squaring our m i value. So this would be 1 64th is 9 64ths. This one would be 25 64ths, and our last one is 49 64ths. Now, our rule says that m4, okay, I'm just going back up to this, that's the sum of i equals 1 to 4 of f of mi times delta x. So that means we are going to add up each of those. So we've got our 1 fourth multiplied by each of these, 1 64th, 9 64ths, 25 64ths, and 49 64ths. And the sum of those is 84 64ths. Which would bring us to a total of 0 0.32812. And 
and that is M4. Now, the question is, how does that compare to the actual value of the interval? Well, why don't we just use our integral techniques? We don't really need many here to determine that. The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx by our power rule is x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. And since evaluating 0 is 0, evaluating at 1 is 1 third, our answer is 1 third. So the actual area is 1 third or 0.3 repeating, which ought to look fairly similar to what we found with our midpoint rule. All right, let's try another one of these. Use m6 to estimate the length of this length of the curve y equals 1 half x squared on the interval 1 to 4. Now this one will take a little bit more work because we need to first write what the length actually is. It's going back to our applications of integrals. That is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. That is just the definition. So we'll apply that by first finding out what dy dx is. That is x, All right, so which means that our length, the integral we're going to actually find the length of, that we'll use to find the length, is the integral from 1 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus x squared. Right, now we can begin the process that we actually were working with the, in the last question. We've got our, our delta x. Okay, and again, this is really all just scratch work. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. We know what the integral we're trying to find is. So delta x is b minus a over n. So that would be 3 over 6, or 1 half. Let's go ahead and add the what I did there, 4 minus 1 over 6, and n is 6 because we are using m6. But again, that's 3 sixths or 1 half. All right, and our x sub 0 is a, that is 1, and our change is 1 half. So this is 1.5 or, go ahead and say, 3 halves. x2 will be 2, x3 is 5 halves, x4 is 7, no, that can't be right, 3 halves, we have x2 is 2, x3 is 5 over 2, okay, adding a half to that, that'd be 6 halves, or 3, x5, that would be 7 halves, and x6, which is our b value, is 8 halves or 4. Good, we ended up going from 1 to 4. Now we'll find our m, so we're going to average each of those. So m1, well, the average of those two is 5 fourths. m2 should be 7 fourths, again because we are adding 1 half, which is 2 fourths. Averaging those two, we get 9 fourths. Averaging those two, we get 11 fourths, 13 fourths, and M6 is 15 fourths. Now finding the function values for those, okay, that's going to be the square root of 1 plus our M squ uh, squared. So this means f of, and we'll go ahead and leave these unsimplified, square root of 1 minus 25 over 16. We can square that. 
f of m2 is the square root of 1 plus 49, 49 sixteenths. f of m3, square root of 1 plus, that'd be 81 sixteenths m4, square root of 1 plus 121 sixteenths. Whoops, go back, that was stuck together. Square root of 1 plus 169 sixteenths m6. Square root of 1 plus 225 sixteenths. Now our formula says that we are going to sum all of those, sum those and multiply it by 1 half because that's our delta x. So the sum of i equals 1 to n, which in our case is 6, of f of mi delta x. Again, sum those values, multiply by 1 half because that's our delta x. And that should be approximately 0. Point, no, scratch that, 8.14307. And that is our estimate for the length of that curve. That's all we have on the midpoint rule. Okay, so go back to those if you need to, repeatedly. We're going to look at one question with the trapezoidal rule. But first, I really want to explain what the trapezoidal rule is because while the formula works, I mean, we can apply the formula. There should be brackets. Make that clear. The formula we can apply. However, I really want to rewrite this. Okay, alternatively, t sub n can be written as a sum of i equals 0 to n minus 1. of f of x i plus f of x i plus 1 over 2 times delta x. This is called the trapezoidal rule because that formula right there is the area of a trapezoid. I mean, that's just what it is. So I don't know why most people don't just write it that way because it so makes sense to me. So, but if you notice, and just tie this together, here we'd have x1 or x0 and x1. Then we have x1 and x2, then x2 and x3. Each of those occurs twice, which is why there are two here, except for the first and the last one, because here, 0 and 1, and then 1 to 2, you move off of that one. And the last one, you go n minus 1 and n. It only occurs once. And the 1 half is coming in because we are averaging these two. We're adding them up, dividing by 2. So let's take the same procedure, the same steps we have done in the last few, Let's first find delta x. Delta x would be, we have a and b, there's 0 and 1 respectively. So that is 1 minus 0, or 1, divided by 4 subintervals. n equals 4. All right, so a is going to be 0. That's, let me label that as x0 as well. x1 would be 1 fourth x2 would be 1 half, and hopefully this looks somewhat familiar. x4 is 1, which is also our b term. All right, now we're going to find f of x0, f of x1, f of x2, f of x3, f of x4, and we'll find that, that is 0, because you're squaring these, 1 16th, 1 4th, 9 16th, and 1. Now, how this differs from the midpoint rule is in the midpoint rule, we average the x values and then evaluate them. With the trapezoidal rule, we evaluate them and then we average them. We're going to average each of these values. 
So that would give us a 1 32nd, a 5 30 seconds, 13 30 seconds, and I'm not this fast with arithmetic. I have worked this out previously. All right, so I suggest that you do check these, even though I have checked them repeatedly. All right, so each of these are the f of, that's f of x0 plus f of x1 divided by 2. That's what that is. This is f of x1 plus f of x2 divided by 2. f of x2 and f of x3 divided by 2. And this is f of x3 plus f of x4 divided by 2. And as such, our formula says we should add these, or at least my alternative formula alternative formula. So if I add all of those up, if I add all of those up, I would get the sum of i equals 0 to n minus 1 of f of xi plus f of xi plus 1 over 2. That itself would be 44 30 seconds. Now I need to multiply by 1 fourth. Yes, that was our delta x. Say this. Delta x, which is 1 fourth, so that t4 is going to be 11 30 seconds, which is approximately 0 0.34375. Now this is actually the same integral as the first question we looked at, and this area is dangerously close to, to exactly one-third, so hopefully you can make that connection. Again, we said the limit as you as it approaches infinity approach that exact area, so that should make perfect sense.